going on family back on here with the juke man and today we're going to be talking about the bull start that is start two and two to the season some good things some bad things we're going to talk about it let's dive straight into it but before we dive into it if you aren't subscribed man road to 1k is still active road to 1k so please subscribe down below comment down below what you think about the bull start and like the video man if you ate breakfast this morning and if you didn't i apologize go get some lunch you eat that lunch like this video down below man so the bulls are off to a two and two start good bad 500 that's where we're at, 500, even killed. And um, honestly, how do I feel about it? It's kind of what I expected. Um, we played two games without Zach Levine, and then the last two games we played with him. Won one game without him, lost one game with him, two and two. And going from opening night, I feel like we look good, honestly. Our bench really surprised me in terms of the production that they were able to put up. You got Goran Dragic coming off the bench. You got Derrick Jones Jr. coming off the bench, Andre Drummond. I actually liked what our bench looked like going against Miami. Now, we played the Wizards. We lost that close game. Without Zach, we lost by two points. Wizards are a tough team. Do I think they're going to be a good team? Not really. Do I think they're going to be better than us? Not really. But they're a good team, and uh, Bradley Beal was able to get a bucket on the last possession. DeMar put up a shot, didn't go in, and then you've seen the NBA release a statement saying that he got fouled and it should have been called. I'm not really looking into any of that. We should have won that game handedly without Zach Levine, and so be it. We lost that game. Going into the Cavaliers game, first home game of the season, Zach Levine comes back in the building. I really thought it was going to be a statement game. I didn't know it was going to be a statement made on us. The Cavs whooped us by like 30 points, bro. And watching that game, like the game came close so many times and then they just stretched out the lead again. Came close, stretched out the lead. In my opinion, it looked like when Zach Levine was off the court, that's when we were able to get some points rolling. I'm not really too sure what that's about, but we brought it to single digits a couple times and then we just going to keep it there. Ended up losing by 30 terrible effort in my opinion just terrible effort and then going into the game that happened against boston in our home court we were down by 20 points in the first quarter 19 but almost 20 points in the first quarter and i was just like yo this bulls team is not looking good at all like defensively we're just too soft in the middle we can't guard the three-point line like it was looking bad then they put the bench in and a 40 point swing almost we were down by 20 and we went to being almost up by 20 heading into halftime like it was crazy i never seen anything like that i was watching the bears beat new england around that time so it was just chicago against new england on basketball and football and um yeah man we were able to turn things around and we never looked back going into the second half it did get close it went down to single digits a couple times but we ended up winning by 20 points and um, yeah, the resiliency with this team, I love to see it. And once again, the bench just continues to surprise me. If there's any takeaways I would take out of these first four games, Zach Levine didn't have his best game against the Celtics. I'm not tripping over that. I think Zach Levine's going to get his regardless. DeMar DeRozan finished with 25. Did it look like he finished with 25? No. But even when his shot's not going in, he's going to go to the free throw line. He's going to make some free throws and he's going to get us some points. So DeMar's going to do him. Ayo Dosumu had 20 points this game. He shot three from three from the three-point line. Like, these are the intriguing signs that I love to see because I think Lonzo's going to have a great contribution to this team, but Ayo stepping up would just be even greater. Once again, I've been saying this since before the season. To me, it feels like Kobe White's leash is just getting smaller and smaller because, um, once again, when you see Lonzo come back, where does he fit in the rotation? I... I don't know. Kobe White, we need him to make some threes, but he's just not doing it so far. Like He's had some good flashes and some good moments, but when he's open, we need him to knock down those shots. And every time I look at him, it feels like he's not doing that. That's just my opinion. I'm not a Kobe White hater. I love Kobe. I was a Zach and Kobe fan when it was Zach and Kobe in the backcourt, but it's just, man, he needs to be consistent. That's the one thing with Kobe. He's just not consistent, but Ayo Desumu, I love what I'm seeing from him. Patrick Williams, same thing in terms of Kobe White consistency bro we're not seeing any of that he put up four points against boston and it's just time to figure out this is the season where we need to figure out is he going to be a guy moving forward or is he not this is it like this is literally it i believe this is year three or year four for him but this is literally his last chance to show is he going to be able to do something or not we kept him out of trade talks all last season because we felt like the potential he has is through the roof defensively and offensively we're just not seeing it so far still early I'm not going to rule him out for the rest of the season. You know, it's still early, but we just need to see more of him, more of an effort defensively, more of a difference maker. We're just not seeing that right now. So that's intriguing. Vucevic, he's looking good as well. Um, he had 20 rebounds against the Celtics. Without them having Robert Williams, they had Al Horford, but Al Horford, he's not going to keep 
Vucevic off the block. He's not going to keep Vucevic off the board. So it was good to see him making that effort. Not shooting good from three. I just want to see him try to be a difference maker in terms of defense and offensively. Um, going down to the block, taking advantage of mismatch, and grabbing all those boards, giving us second opportunities, man. So shout out to Nikola Vucevic. It's still a mixed bag of results, but so far so good. Being 2-2, two two, I'll take that. Our next couple of games, we do play the Pacers tonight. We have the Spurs coming up, the Sixers, which will be a test, and the Nets being a test. So I think we're going to do four-game intervals. That's how I'm going to rock with it, unless there's breaking news or something crazy happens. I think I'm going to be rocking in four-game intervals, just giving a little updates like that. You guys let me know in the comments what you guys think. Should I do post-game recaps? Whatever you guys want to see, let me know. You guys let me know down below what you guys want to see. Do you want to see post-game recaps? Do you want to see every four games? Y'all let me know in the comments down below. And once again, like up the video if you haven't already. It's free. It's easy. Just go right down below and hit that like button and subscribe, man. Road to 1K is still active. Hopefully, the Bulls keep doing what they're doing. And hopefully, we get a lot more Ws coming up. But uh, with that being said, I got more videos to my left right here. I'll catch you guys in the next vid. Peace. Giants are undefeated, man. The Giants are undefeated. Clap it up. Clap it up. Yes, sir. When it comes to the most valuable player, most valuable player to the team, most valuable player on the best team. I think this team is in good hands. And if we are healthy, the whole East needs to be on our lookout.